Well, uh, looks like I picked a good day to wear this shirt. <laughs> and, and fitting, I think. Big news. I think exciting news from Team J Feather over here. They have finally adopted the use of Asdell ultralight composite paneling in their laminated sidewalls, just like the J Feather Micro Series across the entire J Feather line. That is new for 22. That is something that did not exist prior. And this 24 BH, I think, is better for it. It adds uh, a little more peace of mind, a little more sound dampening, a little bit more weather resistance. There's a lot of really good things that go along with Asdell, and we'll talk more about that as we go through the RV. Uh, this 24BH looks as good, if not better than ever. It's got that Blackstone, uh, you know, cooking situation going on in the camp kitchen. We've got it outfitted with the stable steps today. Uh, today we're looking at the, not the farmhouse, the other vintage, the, the vintage decor, not the farmhouse decor, sorry. Uh, there's there's so many very similar names in the Jayco uh, decor lineup right now. I, I get them a little mixed up. Um, but we will carry this both ways. When uh, when one comes into the modern farmhouse or different seating, I'll probably get you a video on that. Today we're looking at one with that kind of, I call it like the Swiss Army sofa, that L lounge. I really like that because this model can be built with theater seats or a dinette, but that can be theater seats or a dinette or anything else you want it to be. That's, what's, that's what I really like about it. So as we go through this, leave me a couple notes. Let me know what you like, what you dislike, or what you change given the opportunity. And I always appreciate that feedback. Now, I don't think you're going to spot a lot of really overt changes on the inside of this one this year. Not a lot on the inside is new for 22. It's, it's mostly some systems and some under the skin stuff, but that's fine because in 21, they made such giant leaps forward that I, I'm kind of happy that they're just riding it for a little bit. Like the way that they went totally, totally carpetless. There's not a shred of carpet in this RV other than the carpet strip that I'm walking on to keep my feet clean as I walk through this thing. In 21, they updated and offered those 12-volt uh, DC compressor fridges like we're looking at there. So the standard fridge on this is a gas electric two-way. Uh, so, you know, if you're looking for boondocking functionality, that, that two-way fridge is still available. They also still have uh, uh, solar packages. And actually, something we'll talk about when we get up on the roof is they have now an expanded solar package they didn't have before. And this is, I think, one of the, the, the very most attractive aspects of this RV is that just direct facing entertainment center that we get right here. And again, there's a dinette, there's a theater seat, but this L lounge option, it doesn't matter you know, where you're sitting on it. Not to mention the fact that you can have more people comfortably sitting across from the TV. I think it works quite nicely. So to begin with, right over here by the entry door, we have a, I think a true example of a pantry tainment system with that handy motion light right there. So good pantry space in here, some coat hangers, but there's open space on the walls if you wanna throw a broom hanger. I am kind of curious, like there's a, uh, there's a power outlet right there. What would you, would you, would you use one of these maybe as like a phone charging station or something like that? Like uh, maybe a portable Dyson vacuum, but with, with this being carpetless, I don't know that you really got to get too much into that. And that makes an awesome shoe garage, by the way. Now whipping around the other side, speaking of shoe garage, down below there is a handy little flip flop slot, if you will. <laughs> Um, and uh, sliding our way up here, you see every little nook and cranny they, they could, they utilized in some fashion over here. Now, again, we're looking at the vintage decor today, which has this kind of, what do you call this? Like, I'm not good with colors. You know, I, I'm barely good with the three primary colors. Um, like, it's like a taupe, a grayish, whatever you want to call it. And this is actually, it's interesting. That is a just beautifully kind of, it looks like almost 3D printed like style uh, wall panel that wraps all the way around here. These are all sealed edge countertops throughout the entire RV, by the way. And uh, I've noticed there's a lot of people that have kind of a love-hate relationship with those pop-up power towers. What do you think about those? Is that positioning right? Would you want it moved somewhere? It, it seems like no matter where a manufacturer puts it, somebody always says it's like in the wrong spot. I, I'm not sure exactly what's correct there. Now you have a flip up counter extension right there because when the slide closes, and we'll show you the slide closed in just a little bit if you hang out with us, it would basically pinch things off. I love that little bonus drawer down below. Again, no space gone to waste. And if you're noticing, that's kind of the thing. You'll you'll notice a recurring trend, especially with Jay Feather and Whitehawk. They don't ever know how to do enough. And what I mean by that is they only know how to do too much. That's kind of a Jayco thing 
thing, really. Not just Jay Feather and Whitehawk, but like even if you look at Jay Flight, they're always like arguably the most heavily equipped things out there in their class. They're always, in a sense, overdone, which uh, I think is kind of cool. And little details like this. This RV has three powered ceiling vents. Every time you find a ceiling vent, you're going to find a power vent fan in it. Now, in the living room, you'll see it has an XL vent fan. In the bathroom and bedroom, you have one of those smaller fans. So the biggest room has the biggest fan. Kind of makes sense. But the good news is that if you want those big fans all over the place, because the power's already been run to them, it is very easy to upgrade those. Get a little reflection of my balding head in the uh, the glass windows there. And the closets have removable shelves if you want to convert those into more dresser space. Both sides of the bed, household and USB plugs to keep your phones and things charged up. But you might notice too, there's a little pocket back there. that It doesn't go all the way to the wall. Just like Big Brother Whitehawk, there's a little kind of handy hidden headboard pocket back there. And I didn't intend to go with the alliteration, but I'm going to roll with it. Handy hidden headboard sounds pretty good to me. Maybe that'll be my new nerdism. I believe that's number 37 if we're keeping track. And of course, full easy lift storage below the bed here. And notice how it's nicely partitioned off. It has good support in the middle of the bed too. That's something that uh, some campers sometimes will suffer from. They have this awesome wide open underbed storage space. But if you're bigger like me and you lay on it, the bed starts to sink in the middle. You won't have that problem here. And as we slide out of the bedroom, um, it's not technically a 22 update. It happened late in 21, but they've changed over to Furion air conditioners. So instead of a 13 or a 15, basically uh, these are all standard a 14.5. Every single one of these now just has a larger, more powerful air standard from the factory, which I don't think is really going to offend anybody. You see how that TV can pivot around for some easy viewing too? Kind of nice like if you're over here in the kitchen doing a little prep work, you're just kind of, I don't know, playing one cooking channel. I don't know. Who's your favorite celebrity chef, by the way? Uh, for whatever reason, like when my wife and I first got together, I never watched the Food Network or anything like that. But uh, we were broke and it was one of the only channels we could get for free. So I kind of, I got into it, you know? And in case you're wondering, like, hey, where do I eat in this thing, eh? Well, it comes with that handy little removable table. It just brackets right onto the front of the couch. One little pro tip for that, though. You don't want to, like, push on it when you're standing up. You obviously don't want to sit on it if you're going to, like... Sometimes you know how you lean against something when you're watching TV or something like that. It's not made for that. It's made for just setting drinks and playtime. And for that purpose, it's perfectly fine. If you are the type that likes to push on things when you stand up, maybe you want to stick with the standard dinette. Or... Maybe you want to add like a little support leg on there or something like that, which would probably work pretty well. Just as it stands, that's not really its intended purpose. But that's what I love about this sofa. It can only do everything. So I thought I'd give you a little size reference here with a bigger guy like me. One of the things that's less obvious until I sit on this, there is room for three adults, which is cool, because it's a longer couch than a common sofa. Like if you put a hide bed in here, it would stop like right here. There'd be like a foot of wasted space. So if you're feeling a little sleepy, this thing is naptastic. And I'm right across from the TV. I can totally sit here on a rainy day, just chill. Uh, it, you know, there's the there's the bunk space back there. The kids can be doing their thing. If it's not too bad, you could be out there under the awning. But if you are needing maximum sleeping space, like if you only need to sleep one more person, just take these cushions off back here, and you've got yourself a, a, a pretty big bed. But if you need something even bigger for maximum, like if you need to try to squeeze eight people in this thing. Well, the longer part of the sofa actually folds open into a trifold sleeper. Now, this is not quite as wide as most height of beds. If you really had to, you could still squeeze two people side by side. Or you might sleep uh, two people kind of long ways here. Or, depending on how it is, like when my daughter was younger, I could totally see my wife and I, the two of us, squeezed obviously tightly over here but we're married it's cool um <laughs> we're familiar and then put our little daughter when she was younger obviously over here she's 11 now and she looks like she's gonna grow up to be about my size so i don't know how well that would work for her currently also the longer portion of that well, well chaise lounge if we're going to be fancy or l lounge as we say in michigan it's got an easy lift gas strut on it that's full storage down there so again, kind of like a bench dinette. You're getting like, if a theater seat, a hide-a-bed, and a booth dinette all had a baby, that would kind of be the result. 
Now, all the windows in the bunk room, uh, by the way, they open for airflow. So that bigger window up there opens up for airflow. And by the way, notice how you've got household and USB outlets with a little phone shelf over there as well as down here. So you're going, wait a tick. Why did they put the window in the back? Well, that's because the camp kitchen door could cover a front window and they wanted you to get to use the whole thing. I'm always a fan of open air ladder walls. Um, it, they're easier to get up and down uh, versus like one of those rod style ladders. And by the way, up here, did you notice that we have ourselves one of those, I, I mentioned it earlier, but the bigger Max Air fan to really push a lot of airflow through this thing. And like I said, here in the bathroom and in the bedroom, they do use the smaller fans. I'm not going to try to gloss over something or, or make you connect dots that maybe aren't true just through like only half information. I want you to know exactly what you're looking at when you come to visit us here at Haylet RV, you know? That kind of pull the curtain back transparency. Like a J Feather has a plastic toilet, a White Hawk tends to have a porcelain toilet. It's going to be a couple little variances like that that kind of separate them. Although I really do like that window there in the bathroom. And just to give you some sizing, this is a six and a half foot tall camper. So my head will need to be in the skylight. I'm um, six, two, six, three for reference, by the way. And down here, because they angled the toilet pretty nicely, this wasn't bad. This really wasn't bad at all down here. I've seen where a lot of manufacturers will angle the toilet straight against the wall, but where there's either some piping or some wiring or something running through that little step, which is why that's there, by the way, it like, it's, it's always in an awkward position. This just, I don't know, it, it felt better, worked better for me. And I told you I'd get back to that cargo bunk space, folks. You know, I don't tend to forget much. Just, you know, like wedding anniversaries. <laughs> and I took the time to also close the slide simultaneously because I think with the slide closed in road mode is probably when you're going to use this the most. Now, if you have a bicycle where you could like take the front wheel off, you could probably slot a bike or two in there, especially, you know, because that'll let you turn the handlebars. Um, maybe... Maybe a small kayak could actually fit in there, and I'm gonna try to do this slowly, not make you motion sick, and then kind of maybe slot up inside here. Now, depending on what seating arrangement you have, you might actually have a little bit of extra space there. Now, you may notice on that uh, little Swiss Army L Lounge right there, does a little bit of everything. The table uh, is kind of intended to ride on the, 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 the sofa when you're going down the road. I, I strap that down for transit, kind of the way Jayco intends right there. Just kind of give you an idea. Now, you notice again, you've got that folding counter extension because it does have to fold out of the way. They did a good job on drawer placement. You can get in, get to the sink. Fridge access is limited, but not zero. If you need to, you can kind of reach in there. It's not ideal, and freezer access is obviously no problem. The hiccup on this one is you straight lose the bedroom uh, with the slide closed. Now, if you need, like, if you've got a little room, this type of slide system, this rack and pinion slide, if you need to move it partially just enough to slip through there, you can. You don't want to leave it that way, though. Like, you don't want to, to do like that and then go up there and sleep. That's not going to work. And when the slide's only partially deployed, you don't want to, like, use it, by the way. But if you need to get up there to get to the closet or you just need to pack it real quick and then close it back up behind you, it could work. Thankfully, Jayco still puts a bedroom direct entry door on this one. And a lot of people are going to say, why do you have two doors on such a small trailer? This right here is why. So that even with the slide closed, you can still access everything in the RV. A lot of builders don't do that on something this size. And a quick look from the other side of that cargo bunk. Down here, one of the things I do like is they do give you a couple little handy cargo straps, which is nice. And in case you're curious about security, this bunk door, I'm not left-handed, has the same kind of deadbolt as our main entry door. And all of the keys on this are key to like. So you need one key for this, for that, for the main entry door, for the baggage doors. It's just simpler, it's easier. Now, as we back up here, I figured we'd start over here on the campsite of the RV because this thing is party central, baby. Woo! Big power awning big power awning on this thing i mean <laughs> this so j feather is what i call more of a true ultralight and it's in a category with a lot of things that are very very price sensitive jayco doesn't really know 
how to edit themselves. They only know how to do too much. And things like, but that's not necessarily a bad thing. I mean, this J Feather might not be the lightest weight or least expensive lightweight you've ever seen, but things like that nice galvanized rolled steel kitchen, a little Jayco bottle opener in there. Uh, the Oh, also, Blackstone Griddle. Now, um, this is the uh, <coughs> ultralight Blackstone model, the Invisio series. Uh, also, Blackstone griddles are currently in shortage. There is no such thing as the Invisio series. I'm obviously being tongue-in-cheek. Um, as soon as the grill griddles become available, Blackstone will actually send it straight to you. So at the time of this filming, there's no griddle present. You're most certainly receiving a griddle. We have uh, outfitted this one with the handy... Actually, I'm sorry. Stable steps are not optional. They are standard on this floor plan because the step well would overlap a little bit with the tires. Now, those stable steps are actually allowing Jayco's engineers to better balance this floor plan for better towing. And speaking of towing here, a couple of things. You've got Goodyear Endurance radials rated for 87 miles an hour. You also have a rear and side camera prep. You also have turn signal safety lighting and reverse lighting. So like if you flip on your right hand turn signal, you see that clearance light right up there by the nose, that and all the side clearance markers are gonna blink right along with it to give you, a, uh, well, the other drivers, a better clearer understanding of your intentions. So that, you know, we're not playing bumper cars because when that happens, Frankly, everybody loses. Now, up on the tongue of the camper, there's a little gold sticker. That is a simple side mount solar prep plug. This also is standard roof solar prep. And we've got to address the elephant in the room. Where is the nose cap? If you watch our industry update series, you, you might already have a pretty good uh, idea as to where the nose cap is. Unfortunately, there is a fiberglass shortage out there. Now there's different types of fiberglass. The fiberglass that composes the skins of the RVs is different from the fiberglass that composes things like the nose caps. And the nose cap type of fiberglass is currently a little bit hard to come by. A lot, Pretty much at this point, it's safe to assume at the time of this posting, J Feathers will come with the traditional fiberglass nose sweep. And frankly, guys, there's nothing wrong with it. It doesn't change the seal points. It does A nose cap doesn't make an RV better. It, it looks good. Yeah, absolutely. It also adds cost and it adds weight. And I don't know about you, but something costing more and weighing more, not always my favorite thing. I don't think it's going to cost enough to make or break a sale. I don't think it's going to weigh enough to change your tow vehicle, but those are factors that you may want to consider. Um, so uh, there's some other things like uh, at the time of this filming, most uh, Jayco Pinnacles don't have rear caps. They just have traditional rear walls. As those things change, it's possible uh, that there might be later on this year, 2022 J Feather 24 BHS or other J Feathers, where the nose caps come back onto them. That is Jayco's intention. They don't intend to leave it like this. This is just the best they can do right now. And when there's such a shortage of inventory out there nationally, they didn't want to just not build anything uh because then nobody wins so that's what's happening back there it's been a crazy time at least you got a camper here you can go camping with and i mean fiberglass noses have existed in this industry for how long there's nothing wrong with it no nothing at all and if you are kind of just curious or shopping around in the market if you haven't checked out our industry update series you might want to do that. It's, it's been uh, pretty popular. We like to kind of pull back the curtain, give you some transparency, let you know what's happening within the industry, at least from our dealer's perspective. We, there, That is a nice pass-through. You got the handy battery disconnect over here. Also, both sides of the pass-through have their own individual lighting. Sometimes little things like that are awful, awful nice. And all J Feathers uh, in their eight wide series standard have an enclosed and heated belly. And that reminds me, Big new feature on J Feathers. Significantly enhanced freshwater holding tank capacity on these. So the little J Feather micros not only kind of forced Asdell onto the Big Brother J Feathers, but the little J Feather micros also had a larger 55 gallon fresh tank. It was even bigger than these. It was bigger than White Hawk. So Jayco said that's stupid and doesn't make sense. So guess what? We're not going to shrink the J Feather micro uh, holding tank. We are going to increase the size of the eight foot wide J Feather Ultralights holding tank and White Hawk. So all J Feathers, all White Hawks have a very nicely sized 50, uh, 55 gallon fresh tank minimum now. And no Jayco tours complete without taking at least a quick stroll up here in their Magnum Trust roofing. If you're not familiar with it, easiest way I can describe it, it's plywood decked instead of OSB deck. They have a little heavier roof trusses and Jayco's 
uh, kind of as a result, like the entire Jayco family of travel trailers and fifth wheels, have the heaviest roof load ratings pretty much in the industry um, they, by about 50%. So this RV, it might be 42 to 4,800 pounds roof load rated. Now that power vent that we saw in the living room, it is uh, like vent cover ready. You see those little ears that stick up? You can uh, add like a little Camco vent cover on that without voiding your warranty because you're not screwing into Jayco's construction. And again, your roof's solar ready. Jayco offered, uh, offers two different solar packages on these. There's the Overlander 190 watt with charge controller and the Overlander 2, which is 380 watts and the charge controller. And little things, the white shroud on top of that air conditioner, it will allow that air unit to run more efficiently, which is, is nice, you know, because <laughs> if it's hot out, you don't want the AC sweating to the oldies like Richard Simmons, because <laughs> then you sweat to the oldies like Richard Simmons. So thank you folks once again for joining us today. If you haven't done so, please take a moment to subscribe to our channel here and like our video. Leave us a couple comments. All those things are greatly appreciated. And short of that, remember, we don't do hidden dealer fees. We just do everything else. So take care, stay safe, have fun, and happy Halo camping, everyone. Have a great day. Thank you.